Welcome to Metal Health. This is Metal Health's fan edition, like number 17, I think. And this is a round two with Rick. Round two with Rick. Rick and Robbie. Yeah, here we go. Say hello, Rick. Good afternoon, Canada. Well, nice. it's it's the internet, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's more than Canada. Man, you're global now, buddy. Well, uh, I've got I've got like people who have added me to Facebook in Portugal, uh, Serbia, Norway, Sweden now with uh, the interview that's going to go up to on Sunday. That's uh, happening. Italy, it's pretty awesome, and then a few people in the states too. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty pumped about this whole situation. I'm I'm loving it so far. Congratulations. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. I know it's been quite a journey, kind of you know watching you. Uh, uh, start that up and just seeing how it's uh, pro been propelled since then. Oh, and, yeah. and you've been actually seeing a couple of things of me before I even started mental health back with uh, my buddy's um, podcast thingy and stuff like that, that, uh, that I've been on before. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, good, uh, good show and a good topic because uh, two things. Uh, one, we haven't had metal shows in a very long time. And two, that directly affects mental health. So, you know, we we could do days of, upon days of uh, uh, topics of relating to this uh, this uh, genre right here. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I I know you're you're uh, you're trained. You got um, well, what do you uh, what do you have as far as certificate wise with uh, mental health? Well, I'm I graduated uh, in. 2020 with my master's in uh, uh, social work with the the discipline of uh, clinical therapist. Uh, but right now um, I'm working, conducting investigations uh, within the social work field, in particular with the uh, older uh, demographic population and dealing with, uh, you know, isolation, abuse, financial fraud, scams. Uh, you wouldn't believe, uh, you know, how this, uh, you know, net afflicts so many of our parents and grandparents uh, with financial online scams. I mean, it, it really, it, it's more prevalent than people really think. Um, yeah, I can, I can see that happening a lot. I bet uh, Como doesn't want you to come near New York at all right now. <laughs> Actually, California, the guy did the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's scary in itself. But um, I do know what you're saying. I still get those uh, phone calls where they, they're trying to get your uh, social insurance number up here and everything. And yeah. uh, I actually, like, I, I, I know when they're coming because it's, it's not a private call, you know, and, it, and uh, it, you have to press one to get to the actual people and everything. So I enjoy those calls because I call them every bad word in the book. Um, uh, uh, like majority of the time, uh, I, um, I, I make it so that, um, the, the word that I'm saying, I won't say the beginning of the word, I'll say the end. It ends with file. Wow. Yeah. Right. And then, then they get all mad and hang up, but they keep calling. So fuck those guys. Well, it, with technology today, it's, it's growing, it's getting more advanced and these people are figuring out more and more ways. Plus there's so many online sites where, People can pay a few dollars and then get a, uh, a, you know, a residential history and personal history of, of individuals uh, and then use that to target some of our, uh, our, uh, our older demographics there. But uh, it's only going to get worse because technology is going to get more advanced. And, you know, all of us at some point, uh, when you and I finally reach that age where, you know, we may have onset of dementia or memory issues, uh, I can't imagine what sort of technology will be in place then to, that we we have to protect ourselves from. Yeah, it's it's scary stuff. I already do have memory issues because like um, with schizophrenia, it's like I have false memories, right? So I remember stuff that didn't happen. And then yeah. uh, also uh, I get in these uh, states of like, it's almost like a perpetual deja vu. Like if I'm, if I'm watching a show, you know, I will start to think like, I'll remember someone telling me what happened right after it already happened it's weird and just like weird situations like uh our, our mutual friend dan there uh we were going to uh play risk at somebody's house and i saw this red balloon on the sidewalk and i was like i remember seeing this red balloon before and it was just and, and it's it like a lot of paranoia involved in that too but um 
Uh, I get through it and I'm still having fun. Well, your situation is very cognitive driven and, and there's a lot of things that can uh, occur as a result. Uh, you know, that is something that does not afflict everybody, but old age afflicts everybody. It's true. And we, you know, if you're lucky with your, with lucky. your situation, uh, it could be compounded, uh, you know, as a result of your pre-existing history. But yeah, I mean, this is something that's going to affect all of us at some point in time. So, you know, enjoy the time. What the, my, my suggestion is uh, to people today with that, uh, who are young enough to still protect themselves is uh, uh, don't be an asshole. Uh, build your, ha have a good, strong social network. Uh, you'll realize and kind of have a reflective, you know, because some of the individuals we deal with have zero social support. They have no friends, no family, no nothing. And, you know, I, I, you feel so bad for them, you know, late in their life towards the end and they have no support. Uh, so, you know, every action you take today and, you know, with everything you see online and out in the news today, people don't realize the long-term effects that that's going to have. Uh, when they become older and then now they're relying on support, uh, they're going to be living very isolated lives. And it's unfortunate. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Um, uh, way to bring us down. Let's talk about metal to bring us up. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and you know, I really hope that uh, the big, uh, you know, these big entertainment industries uh, don't jump on this COVID passport bandwagon. Uh, to where now, you know, there's so many restrictions on social entertainment and gatherings that, uh, uh, you know, that's that yeah. Chinese tyranny, you know, that they have over in Hong Kong and that. And really, you know, festivals are, you know, go see a metal festival, you take a chance. Uh, you take a chance with a lot of things other than catching COVID when when going to, uh, you know, a concert or something like that, especially if you're up front. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, putting restrictions on populations and, you know, not allowing them to live their lives is the worst thing that could come from this whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I've heard that like uh, China isn't even doing the, the vaccine. It's like, is, is that a thing? I'm sorry, what? That China isn't uh, giving their people the vaccine. Like it's just everywhere else, but China, I don't know. I oh, hear I things. I don't trust anything that I see or hear anymore. Cause I don't know what's real. Like yeah. not, not with the schizophrenia, but like with everything else, like media, it's always bought out. Like here in Canada, like what was it? Um, September, 2019 or something like that. Um, the government paid all the media companies a combined of uh, $600 million and they still think they have integrity. So I don't, I don't, I don't just believe anything anyone says on than the TV. Yeah. And then, like imagine that like four months later or so all the all COVID starts happening. I don't trust anything from anyone. And I'm just trying to enjoy my life and, and stay yeah. clean and do what's right. Absolutely, man. You focus uh, you know, nar narrow your vision if you're starting to feel really anxious, a lot of anxiety or feeling stress, depression, you know, maybe kind of like a uh as an analogy of looking out a window, just maybe narrow your view a little bit more, um, cut out the fuzz, the static, uh, the things that you can't change that you have no personal involvement in and begin to focus on your own personal, inter uh, you know, interactions, relationships, and, you know, always approach with a positive attitude. We're all, you know, like, we're the ones that decide if we're going to be in a good mood or a bad mood. And it, it's up to us to make that choice to, you know, yeah, insert some good uh, vibes into the situation. Like when um, it was uh, like last Friday or so, when uh, the premier said that uh, they were basically going to make it Germany in the thirties, 1930s, and you couldn't, they, the police would be allowed to stop you and ask for your ID and ask you where you're going and everything. And even if you were driving, they said they were going to do that. The police ended up wow. saying they're not, but I'll believe that. I, I don't, I don't believe it, but we'll see. we'll see. Not yet anyways, you know? Yeah. And um, so like that just made me, that made me feel terrible. Right. And um, um, I called people that I know in recovery and we were talking and um, I slept on it and I felt a lot better in the, in the, the next day. But that, that night it was, the squirrel was just running. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. 
And if, you know, if that kind of stuff happens on a regular basis, just learn some coping mechanisms. We all have some, we all, but they're all tailored to us. I mean, I can't tell you what mine are because they're, they probably won't do anything for you. Yeah. Uh, but we all have a ways to cope with, uh, you know, negative or, uh, uh, you know, probably impactful things that uh, will worry us later on, but, uh, you know, affect what you can and disregard what you can't. Yeah. And God, if people would realize that, uh, they would live a little bit more, much more happier if they wouldn't think that they hadn't have opinion on everything that occurs on the globe today. No. Um, so I was going to get you to like uh, pick your favorite records to put up here like we usually do, but yeah. um, you're actually the guy that uh, got me into listening to Lick. So uh, it's kind of fitting. And if uh, you're watching this before, uh, what's Sunday? Sunday's the 24th. Fourth or what's going on? What what day? What day is Sunday? Uh, shoot, that's going to be the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. All right. The yeah. 25th, congratulations, man. That's awesome. my interview that I, that's going public. Um, I did it yesterday, and it's uh with the drummer of Lick, uh, Chris. So awesome. Uh, Good so that's really cool. I, I, that's so another reason why I wanted to do this fan edition, uh, with you is because well, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have started listening to Lick in the first place. Yeah, there are so many awesome, I, I, I you know, the, just the uh, the range of, uh, you know, music today. I mean, I, I grew up in the early 70s, I was born in 71. So, you know, I, I love classic rock. Sabbath was, you know, Ab Zeppelin and Sabbath were my two, you know, biggest bands to influence in playing guitar. It's Tony Iommi is God. Uh, but just hearing a lot of the, the new stuff that's, I really... And, and Lick, Lick, of course, and there's a ton of other bands out there that, man, you see them live and just the the amount of sheer power that you feel, you know, is a show. And that's why, you know, I miss it more than anything. I miss concert, just feeling that intensity. You know, that was always a good uh, good vibe. Yeah, because um, uh, you're hearing the music analog, right? And it's like swimming in the music. I don't know, for me, like digital, like uh, I know if you get a good enough system, it'll be awesome, but digital to me feels like it's a squirt gun of music but when i play a record it's just like feels like i'm swimming in the music i don't know it feels fuller nice yeah, yeah i i'm i would end up doing damage to records i can't own them no <laughs> no i mean that that that's a that's a very uh safekeeping collective and i remember i i bought uh haunting the chapel that was the second it was the ep by slayer when it yeah. that came out like in 80 three or four. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was like maybe 14 years old and I, I bought it and I didn't realize what sun does to record. <laughs> and, uh, so I had a long bike ride going back to the house after I bought it. And it was, you know, I had it out in the sun and like, shit, I put it on the record player and it was warped. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it's still played, but it, a little bit different sound to it. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, man, it's very finicky. To, to say the least with these records but um if you do take care of them and uh you know what you're doing it's well worth it because um yeah I, i've told you that joke i've told everyone the joke about why uh about me collecting records and it's it's true though you know um uh it's helped me a lot from uh being like if uh if i'm jonesing to get drugs at all uh and i can't and, it, and it's possible for me to buy a record i buy a record yeah I'm up to like 225 now in two and a half years. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And um, have you ever definitely... thought about opening a record store business, man? I, I'd, I'd like to. It's all going to be online these days, though, with all the shipping, which is silly. But um, I do like the in stores, the brick and mortar uh, stores, best yeah. because like you walk in, you you know, and you get the you get to do the hunt, and uh, that's always fun too. Um, I, I like I like a hunt. I don't like a deep hunt where it's all disorganized and everything, mm -hmm. but um, I do enjoy flipping through the section. And uh, um, you most of the time, the metal section isn't that hard to flip through because uh, there's the sections aren't that big for metal these days. I don't know. It's like maybe two rows, three rows, depending on the record store. Like the best one that I've been to, um, well, as far as quantity goes in toronto here is sonic boom because it's like the biggest and that's like um six to eight rows of uh of metal is in, that um, independent or a chain um 
I, I don't think it's a chain, but it's the biggest one in Toronto. Wow. Um, and so it's got it's got a lot of metal compared to anywhere else, but um, the best quality of metal. And there's like three good rows of metal at this record store is uh, Rotate This here in Toronto. But wow. um, yeah, but you can't go inside to go look anyways. Everything's online. Rotate This, you have to email, hey, do you have this? And then they'll email you back yes or no. Uh, Sonic Boom, they've got a website where you can search and it'll either come up or it won't. Uh, even then, that's not always right. Um, uh, I, uh, I message Origin about doing an interview. Uh, the vocalist uh, sounded promising, so I went down to uh, Sonic Boom, bought the record, and then the interview didn't happen. So if you're in a band and someone asks you, ask, like if I ask you for an interview and you want to just like sell one more record, just say yes and then fuck off because then I'll buy it and then, you know, it won't that, that's not a good PR move. What? <laughs> that's not a good PR move. I, I, and uh, it's it's okay, you know. Um, I enjoy the record, and I, I like Origin. I saw them open for Deicide in 2019, so that was pretty awesome. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, Man, I'm, I'm excited. I, I really, I hope they come back with no restrictions or stipulations or anything like that. I, you know. I, I think I saw that uh, Europe is even already planning. They have, uh, you know, two three-day festivals occurring this summer coming up already. This summer, that would be cool. But yeah, uh, Germany. I think there was there was one metal festival that was going on. Yeah. Yeah, because Dying Fetus was on it, and oh, uh, cool. wow, already they're they're doing festivals this summer. So really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it wasn't for COVID in April, like yeah, it would have been April. Um, Jason Rouse was uh, the comedian. My, he's like a comedian I've been looking up to since I was 14. He, he does all the metal festivals because his material's that uh, dark and messed up, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me to open for him at Inferno Festival, but then it didn't really happen this year because of COVID. So I was like, uh, oh, crap. That would have been awesome, though, going to Oslo, like big black metal festival and do comedy for him. You know? That's awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. hey, congratulations, man, and uh, great job with uh, getting uh, connected with uh, some great artists out there and, and raising this uh, awareness. I mean, I, I, you, you can be a metal fan or any fan of any music, and, and mental health, uh, you know, it impacts across the board. So, yeah. you know, if we can get these two uh, demographics of uh, individuals who enjoy this sort of entertainment and music and become a little bit more aware of uh you know, self-aware and socially aware, uh, good things will occur in the future. Well, thank you, Rick. I'd say my favorite interview that I've done so far, um, uh, especially with the uh, the mental health aspect, is with uh, Nim from, he's from the Netherlands, from Shyla Magnar or whatever the band is called. I have to say that because I can never pronounce it, but that's why he made it that name, so no one could pronounce it. Um <laughs> he has schizoaffective disorder and um it's very cool it was like i've never really talked to someone who's had similar but yet different experiences you know yeah uh, like that anyways because mm -hmm. we're talking about false memories and um like he 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 was just like when i when i talk about how it was like i um uh my reality like like i bumped into an alternate universe's reality and kind of downloaded memories from that and then, uh, then he said, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And like, that floored me because anytime I say something like that, no one ever knows what I'm talking about. And they just look at me weird. And it, it felt good to have someone like con reaffirm like what my, my experience is. So, yeah. How old are you now, Robbie? I'll be 35 this year. So was the onset in your early to mid twenties? Yeah. So I was like 25. Yeah, that's when it normally hits, man. Yeah. If if you if if it's in your family, uh, obviously you're at high risk, but that's normally the onset. Um, man, hey, luckily today there's a lot of good medication out there and yeah. and forms of therapy that uh, can get you through it. And you know, it's awesome to see that you're, you know, still able to function and and focus and have goals and and doing what you're doing now that's pretty awesome man like, but w when i was first diagnosed it was bad right right like i was so tired um 
I, I, I couldn't work, but I still went to work and just didn't end up doing any of the work really. And so then, yeah, it just, it wasn't a good situation. Um, I'd be just trying to find somewhere to hide and sleep. And it was a big place where I could do that. And uh, yeah, I, I, re I regret going to work. Cause I like, uh, it all happened. Uh, I jumped in front of the truck November 11th, got out of the uh, psych ward on December 11th. So it was a month. I did my first comedy set after the psych ward on December 14th. Like <laughs> I never, I never stopped as soon as I could. Wow. Remember, I kept on wow. going. And, uh, but I started back at work in like mid January, uh, that, that, so it was just like way too quick. I, I should have just gone on uh, disability right from the get go, but, um, oh, well, um, hopefully I'll be able to do enough entertaining stuff to make money and I can get off ODSP. Cause like, if I can do that, great. I'd rather do that than just be, um, living off the government my entire life. Cause, um, I, I want to do stuff and I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm just like, a burden like that you know have, have you have you thought about like putting in for like a grant to go back to school and uh you know? not really no um i guess i could take something at humber here in toronto but um i i, no, I wouldn't really want to go for that um i'm doing a pretty decent job on my own yeah um, I, if anything i'd like to learn uh video editing better and mm -hmm. learn how to get my production value better on my sketches and stuff. And in general, that would be good. Um, yeah. Or even a technical trade school or something. Yeah. 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 That would be, that would be cool too. Um, I, uh, I always, I enjoy working with my hands. Like I'm a yeah. cook right now at a vegan restaurant and like, it's, um, it's, it's great. You know, you got your list of stuff you got to do, you get it done and go home. Right. So yeah, that's what I like about it. Well, you know, School saved me um, at when I retired from the military in 2012. Um, you know, I was in for 23 years and, you know, I really never knew who Richard was. You know, I was always a rank and there was a billet description applied to that rank. So, you know, you were essentially told how to act, how to perform and, and what it is you needed to do. And, you know, I loved it, of course, but, you know, you get out after that long in such a very impactful uh, and influential period of your life has been with the military and then deploying. Now you get out as a, you know, late thirties, early forties, and you really have to find who it is you are and yourself all over again. And, uh, you know, school was that for me. I just, I took to it and I, I, I love to learn. And uh, that's what really, I guess, saved me in my own transition from uh, military to civilian life. You're basically like my Jocko. <laughs> uh no, i i've never i really don't know that dude or you know i've seen like his name on the youtube channel but i've never listened to him or why I, I i the only real podcast i've listened to was when uh, jordan peterson and him are talking because either on yeah Dick Martin, peterson yeah you know, it's a, it's always a good chat um awesome yeah so yeah uh, it, was, it was just basically that and uh i might have watched one where he was on the rogan podcast before it went to spotify but wow yeah. But um, yeah, it was just military guy, got out, and he did lots of schooling, and yeah, cool guy. Yeah, and and now as a result of uh, probably my political affiliation and views have done a complete 180 compared to what it was about 15, 10 years ago. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's amazing, you know, how you rediscover things and rediscover in your self-awareness after... Uh, you know, just sitting back and paying attention for a little while. That and um, in that timeline, did you shift or did everything else shift? Because everything shift like, like the the left, it definitely went really far left as far as shifting goes. So yeah, I I, I post uh, quite a bit from a guy named Jimmy Dore. He's a, a leftist, but he just absolutely hammers and calls them out their hypocrisy and. You know how they, you know how they carried themselves during Trump and Obama and Bush, and then now it's, you know, they're somehow pro-war. I, I, I don't get it. You know, I really. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it either. Um, something like I always thought that um, they should do. I think it'd be funny is if uh, they named the bombs they were dropping off the people that voted for the current president that was in that year. You know. <laughs> You know, it's like Jimmy Kimmel killed uh, 40 kids at a, at a school in Syria. 
you know? Uh, there you go. Write that one down, man. That's a good one. It's it's been in my head for a while. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would think as a comedian, you would have to walk around constantly with a pen and a, a little a little sketch pad. We got our phones. We got our phones now. There's the uh, uh, Notepad app. You know, so we can yeah. through all kinds of those ones. I, I uh, I've recently written like some pretty good communist ones. Communist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like in like in the notes because it's like. Um, uh, what, what's I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll drop a couple here. Um, um, people have been wondering why I've been getting so fat lately. Well, it's because every time communism takes over, there's mass starvation. So I want to live as long as possible. Right. Nice. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, the, there's it, another it, one about I, history. I'm sorry. What? There's another one about history. About yeah. uh, the last time people were throwing around the word privilege a lot, it was in the uh, Russia in the, around the 30s with the Kulaks. And um, basically what happened was they said the Kulaks had uh, uh, privilege because they had land and were able, able to prosper, grow crops, and, and do well for themselves. And so what happened, uh, because of the privilege, they all got murdered. And um, the thing is, though, uh, everyone else didn't learn how to farm first. Now, I'm not saying white people aren't evil. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. learn how to farm first. Yeah. So. Ma'am, unfortunately, the clock might get rolled back sooner than we expect, you know, with the uh, pace that we're at right, right now. Yeah, it's really scary, right? Especially, like, like uh, people are going to be like, oh, but COVID and stuff. Yeah, but, um, you know, I'm going to, if I say this stuff, you know, then, like, I'm going to be throwing off a lot of my, uh, my uh, people like metal because, like, that like remember when metal was like this like outsider thing you know you were the kid that got bullied and you listened to metal and you felt at home and when you go to a metal show you'd feel like finally I'm around my people and then like you go back to your hometown after the show and you just feel like shit because you you're not around your people and like uh, in the last like 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 nowadays it's like um, those kids weren't picked on enough and uh, now it's just like peace love and everything and we'll just go right along with what the TV said. Even though the TV has said that metal's been dead since the '90s, when people stopped listening to Poison. <laughs> I, I imagine, know. imagine uh, listening to metal in the the mid and early '80s when it was hair metal, and being bullied because you like metal, and then it's hair metal that you had to defend. <laughs> yeah, what a dark time for for our uh, music genre was back then, man. Yeah, I, uh, I I wouldn't know. I was born in '86. So. <laughs> yeah, nice. No, it was, uh, you look back and just some of the photos of the bands doing their, uh, you know, their, their commercial public relations campaign and the, man, that, what a dark period for, uh, for metal. That's why uh, grunge had to come along. Yeah, they I'm glad grunge that, uh, killed it for the most, killed that part of it for the most part. Um, yeah, because like, it was in its very adolescence, you know, basically, um some critics and stuff like to say led zeppelin was metal and stuff but no it was it was all black sad well yeah. led zeppelin was that was on that one side of the line and black sabbath crossed the other side of the line may, yeah. may becoming metal right and then yeah i don't have to tell you you lived it man so uh well, they, they, yeah. zeppelin was more of a hard blues yeah there you go there you go and technically uh sabbath was blues in the beginning too right and uh it wasn't until like um, Tony cut off his fingers accidentally, and then he had to change what notes he was playing a bit, and took it that way. Um, but yeah, metal was in its adolescence. They found a way to sell it on MTV, and um, that was like the best and worst thing for it, because like it changed what metal was, right? Because like metal was like the underground. Then, then the more MTV ish you got. The, the less actual metal sounding you were or like even Motley Crue's first two albums uh, I'm told are actually like they're pretty heavy and then they just they go and just start being commercialized right so, yeah 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 you know what hey uh, that brings up a good point right there hey what's this uh, upcoming deal with uh, VJ man Oh, uh, I'm uh, uh, Ed the Sock, all right? Uh, Much Music was like uh, Canadian's MTV, and um, 
it um, in much music there was a VJ. He was a sock puppet called Ed the Sock. He's got green hair. He was smoking a cigar. He's been he was around for like thirty years, and uh, now he's trying to make a new like social media channel uh, called New Music Nation. We're actually doing crowdfunding right now. Um, and um, once we've got crowdfunding, then we can make product and then we have um, proof of content and stuff to actually get um, um, like sponsors and people to uh, invest in us. And uh, I'm the metal VJ for that. So I pick them, I pick the music videos and um, I, I, uh, I do the in between music videos, the throws, that's the, what they call it and talk in between them. And uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's a lot of fun. And I never thought I'd be doing awesome stuff like this. And, That's cool. Uh, yeah. So we're just doing a crowdfunding. If you go to um, newmusic.ca, you can, um, you can get one of the, uh, you can donate money and um, get, um, what is it? A, like, I, for me, I, I donated 25 bucks and I get a pair of Ed the Sox socks. <laughs> but there's, there's all kinds of stuff you can, you can get. Very cool. um, it, it's very cool uh and because it's not going to be just canadian because it's the internet right it doesn't matter yeah. where you are you can watch it it's not like the old tv days right and uh yeah so um at first we're going to be doing like independent canadian stuff and then let it grow and get bigger from there yeah definitely hey send me that link man i'd love to kick in and, and help out a bit that'd be cool well, all right rick I'll, I'll send that to you but uh, yeah, yeah absolutely man um i'm really happy about it um, when I was talking to Chris about it from Lick, um, uh, I, I got to tell him that like on the internet in a couple of uh, meme groups I am, I'm in, a uh, metal meme group, um, sometimes they call me an elitist. And then I now I get to correct them and say, I'm not only an elitist, but I'm a gatekeeper too now, okay? <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. Not a, not a gate creeper. That's a band. That's, that's, that's different, but... Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Actually, they just released a new album. Uh, there's like a fast side and a slow side, and it's very cool. Check that out, people. Yeah, Matt. There are so many awesome uh, groups out now that uh, just individuals can take a pick from and just hear some really hard stuff. But uh, congratulations again. I know you're a busy man, and it's Friday evening over there, and you got a lot probably you want to do. Uh, so, I'll, 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 you know, you know, I was napping before we did this. So there's not a lot that I've got to do, but um, uh, thank you very much, Rick. Um, and a cool thing is because I picked the music videos, there's definitely going to be some extreme metal in there. It's not going to be just all power metal or anything. Yeah, like that. Nice. There's going to be death metal. There's going to be black metal. Some genocide though, pack. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be fun. All right, man. Thank you very much, Rick, for being on Metal Health. Nice, Robbie. God bless and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Yes, sir. This is the perfect analogy for mental health. All right? Boom. I fall. And then, like, the jogger comes up. Oh, well, that happened. That happened right in front of me. Do I have to care? Looks around. Looks around. Do I have to care? Oh, there's no one around. Okay, I'll just keep going.